So I was on my way. Uh, my life was changing. One of the best classes that I took was a class in formation on communication skills. Um, I had none. I didn't know what communication skills were. I had no reason to be um, a person who understood how to communicate because I had my own way of communicating and people adjusted to me. So the communication skills really st started talking about how to listen and how to be patient and how men and women sometimes are wired differently and that they hear things and respond to things differently. And I remember right in the middle of formation taking this class, and for the first time in my life, I heard about gender differences, about how men process and how women process. And I had no idea at the time how that one class was going to change my life. Because in the middle of that class, I started reading books on my own, which I had never done in my life, about gender differences, about how men process and how women process. And how, how women look at the world. And for the first time I understood when two women get up and go to the bathroom together, that they're going to talk to each other and they're gonna talk and talk and talk. And at the end of their conversation, there will be no solution. And somehow both women feel better at the end of that time. And when men listen to women talk, all they're really doing is listening close enough so that when they finally do stop talking, that they can tell them the solution to their problems. And to sit in a room and to hear that and to experience that and to come to understand that and to realize there wasn't a right or wrong, it was just that we were very different. And that very different would, would become the theme of my formation to the point where you realize for the first time that as convinced as you are of the world that you believe in, that there are many, many different ways of looking at things. And it started this process of tolerance and patience and understanding and tried to be non-judgmental just because somebody thought differently or believed differently in me. It didn't make them a bad person. It just made them different. And then to hear about men who go to work all day long and in their minds, when they walk in the door at the end of the day, that the only thing that's required in order for them to be happy is for somebody to say thank you. And if they're hearing and feeling that they're appreciated for going out into the world, that somehow that makes the rest of the day and the rest of the doing, everything that they're doing, worthwhile. But if they don't hear the words thank you, if they don't feel appreciated, then they're unwilling to do anything else. So to take out the trash becomes an extra compared to uh, just doing what's supposed to be done. So this gender difference uh, really came into play in my life because we had been married for a while. We had two kids that were young and I noticed uh, because I didn't talk a lot, my wife talked a lot around the house, mostly to the kids. And uh, I noticed that she was mad most of the time about something and I wasn't sure what it was, and I wasn't sure I wanted to know what it was. I just knew that she was mad. And so she screamed every now and then, or she screamed a lot, mostly at the kids because she knew I wouldn't listen to her screaming. So I noticed that she was unhappy, but I had no idea why, and part of me didn't care. And when I started getting into all these gender differences, it said that sometimes women get frustrated because guys are supposed to know what they're thinking. And I was thinking and I was reading and I was asking questions about, could this possibly be true? Are there really women out in the world who get upset and continue to get upset and they're waiting for their husbands to figure out what's wrong because if they love me, they'll figure it out. And that way, uh, everything will be okay. And I said, could that possibly be why she was so mad and why she was so upset? And so, I'm not a big fan of talking about things. I'm more of a big fan about trying to change things by action instead of by words. And so I quietly shifted my attention at home to just being more present to doing things around the house without being told. I simply tried to pitch in more. 
I tried to become more. We never talked about my change of behavior, but after three months of doing that, all of a sudden she wasn't screaming anymore. And I, was, I couldn't believe that it was that simple. And so finally, after three months, I said to her, if you're waiting for me to figure out why you're so upset all the time, you're waiting for me to figure that out, it's never gonna happen. You're going to have to tell me what you're upset about because for the first time, I've noticed that we may be wired differently, that we may see the world in a different way. So I'm not the brightest guy in the world, so you need to express to me what's wrong and guarantee you that 99% of the time, I'm going to be more than willing to do whatever you ask me to do. But this hidden, I'm upset and you're supposed to figure it out because you love me, it's not gonna work, it's never gonna work. And so the byproduct of being in formation, the byproduct of taking classes on communication, the byproduct of all of a sudden I was looking at the world in a different way. All of a sudden my marriage was in a better shape than what I could have ever dreamed of. All of a sudden I was more present to my children who I thought at the time was as long as I took care of them, they should be okay. But to all of a sudden to start having conversations with them, to be present with them, with them, to spend time with them without being told that I had to do it, that's something that I was looking forward to doing. I was beginning to notice the impact that the formation was having on my life. Still working full time outside of the church, still trying to balance the church, new church community, still trying to balance my life at home. And it was the beginning of a process for me when I realized that I would never be the smartest guy in the room but I didn't need to be, I just needed to be myself because I realized that there's all different types of places that you can go to get the answers to most questions that you need answered to. The fear is that you don't realize that you need to look. And so this, this beginning process of conversion, this beginning process of looking at the world in a different way, this understanding that I go to class and get beat up, but because there's a valid reason, because sometimes it's really not fair. Sometimes people are granted permissions to do things simply by gender, and that this was the beginning of a long process. Um, coming from a family situation where my father left my mother after 24 and a half years of marriage, to be the one left behind, to get that feeling of what it feels like to be a woman who is isolated and unprepared to face the world, after somebody who promised that they would be there walks out. All these things all of a sudden became factors in the way that I was being shaped, the way that I was being formed, the way that I was being prepared to be a permanent deacon in the Catholic Church. So it was important to learn the law. It was important to know how to do things in the church, how to do the sacraments and this, that, and the other. But we didn't spend a lot of time on that in the beginning years because I don't think Father John or I believed that this was actually going to happen because there were so many different obstacles that needed to happen. So I think in the back of my mind that he was opening the door for somebody to come through, but he wasn't sure and I wasn't sure that I would be that person. So it was after years of going to school, it was after years of unbelievable conversations with him and with anybody else that would listen to me about the different changes that I was going through. But this calmness came over me and this quiet this came over me where I didn't want to talk about the things that were happening. I wanted people to notice the things that have happened. I wanted to change my behavior and be a better person. So for me, I had this guy uh, that looked like Popeye the sailor that was from New York City and he worked for me in a construction company. And I, I had the foulest language of any person on the job. Because in the construction business, especially if you're in charge, you have to get everybody's attention. And you can't do that by asking them how they feel. You have to do it by demanding what you need them to do. And so there was this one particular day that Papa and I were uh, going at it about something that he had done or was getting ready to do or whatever. And I laid into him. I mean, I just laid into him like I had done a thousand times before. And he turned his head and he looked at me. He was probably standing on a stepladder. He probably could have killed me if he ever hit me. And he says the words to me that I'll never forget. 
He said, is that any type of behavior for a person who's preparing to become a deacon in the church? And of course, I screamed and hollered at him because he was right. Um, but it was one of those moments where you step back and you go, no, it's not a good behavior for a person who's preparing to be a deacon in the church. And I started to get a sense of what it meant to be not only changing internally, but externally to be called to that all of a sudden that I was going to be in a position where people would look at me differently simply by the choice that I made, simply by the choice of trying to be providing service to other people. And so it was the beginning of a process that I wasn't sure, and I was pretty sure that I wasn't qualified to explore.